We open up the country file in 25 minutes when there'll be a report from the Brecon Beacons National Park where a major row is brewing, at the heart of which are the strict planning controls. First on BBC One, this week's edition of the programme for the deaf and hard of hearing. See here. seen four years ago in Finland at the end of the last conference of the World Federation for the Deaf. As you saw they were introducing the new host nation Japan where this year's conference will be held in Tokyo from the 2nd to the 11th of July. The theme at Congress in Japan is equality and self-reliance. There are a number of speakers from the UK who will be going as well as other well-known deaf people from other countries. The official languages of the conference are English and French. But what about those deaf people who do not use these languages? How can they manage to follow the proceedings? We all know when attending conferences that it's very important to get the exact meaning of what everyone is saying. This, in turn, can lead to a huge barrage of interpreters. Just look at all these people working so hard at the last Congress in Finland. For example, they found that when a deaf child lagged in communication skills, the hearing mothers were more often more inflexible, controlling, intrusive, and disapproving. But when deaf people travel around the world, the social aspect never seems to be a problem, be it in Europe, the Americas, or the Far East. Different countries have their own indigenous sign language, but the principles of sign languages are the same. Therefore, deaf people from different countries can communicate with ease at international events. Hello, you're from Japan, aren't you? Yes, that's right. Well, I'm Swedish. Hello, pleased to meet you. Now, next year, the World Federation for the Deaf Congress is being held in Japan, isn't it? Yes, Japan, 1991, in Tokyo. The World Federation Congress will be held. In England this week, there are 60 people from Japan. And we're trying to persuade people and spread the word and get as many people to come to Tokyo next year as we can. Are you expecting many people from Japan to come to the Congress? Japanese deaf people, well, I think, uh, well, altogether there's a limit of 6,000 people we can take at the Congress. So there's plenty of room. We were expecting so many people, the building we're using is probably going to collapse. Well, I think what we're going to have to do is uh, put guy ropes around the place we're using to hold it steady. There were so many there. So, is sign language the same all over the world? No. They were using what is commonly termed international sign. Not a language, but a communication mode using many of the principles of sign language. Even so, many deaf people are able to follow different sign languages with a little effort. Here is a clip of French sign language. It's the well-known story of the three little pigs. This version comes from the Swiss deaf television programme called Signe. The storyteller is Serge Aubon. Once upon a time, there was a mother pig who had three little pigs. Now she was very, very poor, and she couldn't afford to feed them all. So one day she gave them each some money and told them they'd have to go off and live by themselves. 
So they all went off, and the first little pig built himself a house of straw. And he built it very, very quickly. The second little pig built himself a house made of wood. He put up the walls and then put on the roof and it was finished. The third little pig built himself a house of bricks. And he worked very, very hard for a very long time building his house. When he'd built the house, he decided he needed a chimney. So he climbed on the roof and put up a chimney. Now in the forest, there was a big bad wolf. And one day he came out of the forest and saw the house of straw. So he came up to the house and knocked on the door. The little pig heard him and the wolf said, I've come to eat you up. Oh, no, 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 said the little pig. So he counted to three the wolf, took a huge breath and blew the house away. So the little pig ran away as fast as he could. The wolf then came to the house of wood. He knocked on the door and he said, I'm the wolf and I've come to eat you up. And the little pig said, no, no, no. So the wolf counted to three, took a huge breath and blew the house of wood away. And the two little pigs ran away. The wolf then came to the house of bricks where all three little pigs were hiding. So he licked his lips and went up to the door, knocked on the door, and the three little pigs heard this and they were terrified. It's the wolf. So the third little pig said, don't worry, this house is really strong. The wolf outside counted to three, took a huge breath and blew as hard as he could at the house, but the house didn't fall down. So he tried again. He counted to three, took a huge breath blew on the house as hard as he could, but the house wouldn't fall down. Then the wolf saw the chimney and thought, that's a way in, so he climbed up onto the roof. The three little pigs saw him climb up past the window. So quickly they made a fire in the fireplace, lit it, blew on it, used the bellows on it, waved newspapers at it until the fire was burning well. The wolf climbed up, climbed up onto the roof and came down the chimney, licking his lips all the way down, and suddenly he realised he was being burnt, so he leapt out of the chimney as fast as he could and ran back into the woods. The three little pigs were so pleased they went outside, played some music, and danced with happiness. Brilliant. I really like that. Some of the signs are different, like the window and the wolf signs, but the principles are the same, the facial expressions, I understand it very That's well. That's right, I understood it very well too. Well, in the story, the third little pig's house was strong enough to stand up to the wolf. And many of our historic buildings in Britain are well over 500 years old. But over the years have been falling into disrepair. They urgently need renovation, but the skills needed are almost extinct. That's why the National Historical Building Crafts Institute have set up training courses for youngsters to learn these skills. And we went along to the training centre at Lincoln, where three deaf students are currently undergoing a two-year course. Two are training to be stonemasons, and one a plumber. in York College of Art and Technology and we're about to meet two deaf lads who are apprentice stonemasons. Hi there. Hello. Hi. Hi. Now why did you decide to become a stonemason? Well really I like uh, working with my hands and doing this. It's, it's enjoyable. 
What are you actually making here? That really, it's just practice. I'm learning to improve my technique, really. Now, how long is this course you're on going to last? Two years altogether. Great. Do you like it? Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Good. Now, can you show me how, how to do this? I'd like to know. Okay. Be very careful how you hit it. Don't hit it too hard. Hit it quite gently. All right, really gentle. Great, thanks very much. Hi there. Hi. Now, is this quite difficult to do? Yes, it is. Well, why? Well, you're doing a curve like this, you've got to be very, very careful. You've got to get the angles absolutely right. It's going to be perfect. Now, in the future, when your course has come to an end, is it going to be difficult or easy for you to actually get a job? Well, really, it, um, it depends on my CITB record. CITB? That's right. And if I've got good marks and uh, you know, I've, I've been doing well, then I think it might be easy to get a job then. It will be easier anyway. Um, that's it, really. Great. Now, I'd like to have a go. You show me? Yes, all right. Hang on. That one. Now, are you right-handed or left-handed? Well, I actually write with my right hand, but if I'm doing any work sewing, I use my left hand. OK, well, you hold this like that, and the chisel like that. Do that now, you try it. Poor, it's heavy. Practically, they're coping very, very well. Um, the, the tool skills are very good for the student at this particular stage of the course. Um, they do very well in the technology classes, but at this particular stage, we couldn't predict how they will do in any exams they may take in future. Well, originally, they were taken on as trainees by the Historic Building Crafts Institute, which is based in Lincoln. And as the um, training for stone masons is in one of five colleges, throughout the country, it was thought that uh, they could move here as easily as anywhere else. We can see that there will be a problem when they come to take their uh, sitting guilds examination in June of next year. But we know that neither sitting guilds nor ourselves would like to drop the standard of the qualification. And sitting girls do have a system whereby they can provide some type of assistance during the exam, either as communicators, or we believe that they actually sign the papers for the students to understand and answer more easily. We will be following this up with sitting girls when they both return to us in September for the second part of the course. These uh, people are training to be stonemasons. Why are they working with computers? Well, computers can be very, in, very useful to them in their future work. At the moment, this is just a short course to introduce them to computing. They do word processing, which they can use for writing letters, reports, that kind of thing. And at the moment, they're working on a spreadsheet to work out the cost of bricks for building a house. Later on, they'll be doing things like uh, 
computer-aided design and um, quite a lot of other uses of the computer. But at the moment, they're really familiarizing themselves with the keyboard and with the uses of the computer in uh, various ways. They spend 22 weeks in college during the first year and 12 weeks in college during their second year in various blocks of three to four weeks. During the time they're out on site, um, they will be spending the time with a, a sponsoring company who will give them practical experience. The actual scheme uh, for the disabled people is sponsored by the Prudential Assurance Company uh, we contacted them and they said they would sponsor these three into the school. So at the end of the day, we expect to have tradesmen that are capable of not just doing normal uh, plumbing, joinery and uh, bricklaying work, stone masonry, but also doing the expertise work, which we, is, is the old crafts, to retain the old crafts for conservation work. Those deaf boys have been sponsored for their two-year course by the Prudential. We've also sponsored another three youngsters who are now learning bricklaying. One of the boys in the film, Tu Sin Lai, has been sponsored for a third year by another company. And the firm has also offered him employment at the end of the course. That shows the kind of positive commitment that can come from large companies, and it's one that we hope will catch on. The National Deaf Children's Society has just launched a preventative campaign about glue ear and published a report which states at least a quarter of Britain's school children are having their learning ability impaired and are in danger of developing permanent deafness because of a condition known as glue ear. This is how the campaign was reported on the news programmes. I'd just like to look in your ear, all right? Yes. Katie is eight. For some years, she's been having ear infections and signs of deafness. Like thousands of other young children, she has a condition called glue ear. Right. Can I look Fluid in trapped okay. in the middle ear can't escape. It's surprisingly common. Most children get it at some stage. And when it lasts for months or years, it can interfere with their education. My teacher gets annoyed with me because I can't hear her. So what do you say? Miss, um, I can't hear you. In the very young, glue ear can even prevent them learning to speak properly. Today's campaign is designed to encourage parents and others to be aware of the problem and keep an eye out for the symptoms in their children. These include earache or strange behaviour like daydreaming. In the clinic, a simple ear test can reveal the condition. This reading is what you get with a normal ear. But Katie's right ear has the problem and produces a flat line. In many children, the condition resolves of its own accord eventually, but some need little valves or grommets inserted in the eardrum where they stay for a year or so. With increased awareness the of the problem, doctors food. believe much suffering could be prevented. Its principal importance is educational and social. Uh, glue ear is a very common condition in young children. There are several things that we can do to help alleviate the problem, but while it's present, it can have quite a profound effect on the child's education and also their social interactions. The symptoms for parents and teachers to look out for are, firstly, earache. If a young child develops sudden painful earache, Take them to a doctor urgently. This is a symptom of an infection of the middle ear and it can lead to glue ear which must be treated. Secondly, a child tugging at his or her ear. This can be a symptom of blocked middle ear, perhaps not with an infection involved, but make an appointment to see a doctor. And thirdly, 
daydreaming behaviour or being in a world of their own. A symptom of middle ear trouble which could lead to glue ear. Now that's some information and advice for parents. But the NDCS believes that two other groups of people need to know about it. And they are doctors and teachers. All three groups can send for a fact sheet. And these are available free from the NDCS by enclosing a stamped addressed envelope. The address is the National Deaf Children's Society, 45 Hereford Road, London W5 5AH. We'll show you that address again at the end of the programme. Now the advice we've given you so far has been medical. But what about the educational and social difficulties which can follow a late diagnosis? As we saw in the film with Katie, it does create a problem for the child. Now with me today is Deirdre Heath, who's Head of Services for Hearing Impaired Children for Harrow. Now, you're involved with all kinds of children, not just specifically deaf children, is that right? That's right. We're involved with not only the severe and profoundly deaf children, but we are very concerned about the one in four of the school population between the five, ages of five and eight who will have some form of hearing problem, usually a fluctuating hearing problem. Now, how are these symptoms recognised as glue ear in a classroom setting? Many of these children have difficulties concentrating and they have problems with memory, sequencing and listening. These difficulties would come across clearly to a teacher when they ask a child to recall a story and they obviously will have difficulty remembering and putting the story in the right sequence. So it's only recently that we've become aware of the significance of this. I think we're becoming more aware of the problem and that children that presented themselves as having learning difficulties or behaviour problems, daydreaming, children that were frustrated are now perhaps known to have a fluctuating hearing problem. So how can you help the teachers? I think if teachers that are aware of the problems that these children have and in the conditions that they're trying to learn within classrooms, children that have hearing difficulties find it very difficult to hear in noisy situations. We with normal hearing do not hear all conversation, but with our knowledge of language we are able to fill in the missing gaps. Children with hearing difficulties are not, have not got our knowledge of language and therefore guess and they often make mistakes. Once they have made mistakes, they are reluctant to often try again. We encourage teachers and parents to work closely together so that they are able to identify when the child's hearing has dropped and also help the child. Careful handling of the child, sensitive handling of the child is very important so that the best is given to the child at all times. Great, thank you. That's it. Bye-bye. See you next week. That edition of See Here will be...